Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. Yeah, danger is my assignment. I get sent to a lot of places I can't even pronounce. They all spell the same thing, though. Trouble. But when I walk into the commissioner's office, I don't realize this assignment's going to end up with my saving three lives by calling the right football play. Commissioner, Ruth said you wanted to see me. I do, Steve. Your plane leaves for Indochina in one hour. Indochina? Look, can't you send me to some nice, peaceful place sometime? You'd probably die of boredom. Or shock. Well, okay. What's the deal? Think back three months ago today, Steve. Three months ago? Yeah, yeah. She was a redhead. What about her? What a memory for certain things. But that's not what I mean. Oh. I'm talking about Paul Savage. Remember him? Savage? Sure. One of our government clerks who was discharged three months ago on suspicion of being connected with a spy ring in this country. What about him? At the time, Savage claimed he was innocent. Don't they all? Last night, we found out Savage was right. What? Last night, one of those witnesses in the cases suddenly felt like talking to us. He arranged a secret meeting with one of our agents, but on the way to that meeting, he was shot. He lived just long enough to tell us that he and the other witnesses had been paid to say what they did. But the whole case against Savage was a frame. Brother, this is a great time to be finding that out. Who framed Savage and why? You remember at the time, Savage claimed he had complete information on the spy organization in this country. He was framed to discredit him and shut his mouth. I still don't see where I... Hey, wait a minute. You said I was flying to Indochina. You mean that's where Savage is now? Here, take a look at this European newspaper picture, Steve. Prisoners of the gorillas in Indochina. Hey, one of those prisoners looks like Savage. We think it is Savage, Steve. We know he went to Indochina. We also know he signed up with the French to fight the gorillas. Looks like he got too close to them. And now he's in a gorilla prison camp somewhere in Indochina. It's up to you to find him and get him out of there. Are you kidding? Aside from making proper restitution to him, he's got information that's vital to us, Steve. So I'm just supposed to walk up to the gorilla prison camp, knock on the door and say I want Savage, huh? All you do it is up to you, Steve. If those gorillas realize who Savage is, they'll probably get the word to kill him quick. You've got to get him before that happens, Steve. Now get over to Indochina. Talk to Major Correa of the French Army in Saigon. Then go anywhere and do anything that's necessary to get Savage out of there alive. And, incidentally, try to stay alive yourself. Well, I said, you've got your assignment. Good luck. National Broadcasting Company is presenting Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy in the role of Steve Mitchell, colorful, two-fisted government agent. At all those places of the world where danger and intrigue walk hand in hand, there you will find Steve Mitchell on another Dangerous Assignment. Sure, I've got my assignment. A real breeze. All I have to do is plunk myself down into no man's land and into China and rescue a war prisoner before the guys who've got him find out who he is. Yeah, it's going to be a race. Whoever gets to Sarvich first wins, and I've got an uneasy feeling the race is going to turn out to be a dead heat. It's Friday when my plane lands in Saigon. I head for French Army headquarters and the commandant, Major Corre. I do not envy you your assignment, Mitchell. Neither do I, Corre. As you know, a large part of northern Indochina is now in the hands of these so-called guerrillas. They seem to have unlimited manpower and equipment. Do you have any idea where they're holding this guy, Sarvich, a prisoner? Oh, oui. I have been studying this uh, newspaper picture you brought to me. As you know, it shows a group of prisoners at work repairing a damaged river bridge. I recognize the bridge. It is slightly to the east of Dondang, near the Chinese border... I think you will find your man Savage in a prison camp in that area. I see. Uh, how many men can I have? Ah, that is the unfortunate thing. What? I can only spare you one. One? Oh, great. Oh, rest assured, I would like to cooperate with you to the fullest extent. But we have too few soldiers as it is, and 
With a constant threat from the north. Okay. Any ideas on how this two-man army is going to invade northern Indochina? Oui. Sergeant Luca. Yes, Commandant. Uh, come in here for a moment. Yes, sir. Luca is one of the best native non-commissioned officers we have. He knows the northern country like the palm of his hand. He will be your guide. Hello, Luca. I am honored, Mr. Mitchell. Luca will brief you on the plan to get in, Mitchell. Mm. As for getting out again... You know, I was sort of wondering about that. I want to keep this deal a round trip, you know. At midnight, the night after tomorrow, one of our torpedo boats will approach the coast at this point on the map. North of Haiphong, huh? Oui. Mm. The boat will come close into the beach and remain exactly 20 minutes. No more. Sort of cutting it close, aren't you? And now, if you will come into the next room with me, Mr. Mm. Mitchell, I brief you on our arrangements for the trip north. Okay, Luca. Well, thanks for everything, Major Curé. Uh, I only wish I could do more. Well, I'll see you in a few days, I hope. Well, let's face it, Jack. This is going to be a rough deal. Hey, you don't sound like you'd lived in Indochina all your life, Luca. No, no, no. I grew up here, then went to school over in the States for a year. I was going to be a big career man. Public health, welfare. Might as well have majored in bird calls. Or jungle fighting. You can say that again. Well, here's the setup. After dark tonight, we'll be flown up the coast. North of Haiphong away, we'll turn inland, make parachute jumps. Well. Then, if we're lucky, we'll... Make our way to a little farmhouse near there. After that, we'll... Well, we'll just see what turns up. Okay, well, I'll see you at the airstrip at dark. You know, uh, you don't sound very bitter, Luca. Bitter? Yeah, getting ordered to an assignment like this. <laughs> I volunteered for it. Volunteered? Sure. As soon as I heard you were handling the job. <laughs> Look, I must have a better press agent than I thought. I didn't realize my reputation... No, no, that's not what I mean. It's just that... I've been dying to talk to someone like you, someone who could tell me. Tell you what? What happened to Notre Dame this season? <laughs> well, we sure picked a nice dark night for this little leap. The darker the better. Hey, we're turning, Luca. Yeah. Heading inland. Just a few seconds more now. When that light over the door goes on, we get off. Be sure to keep your hand on the ripcord. Don't you worry. You couldn't pry it off with a crowbar. When you get down a little way, you'll spot the clearing. Worker shrouds try to land it. Okay. Hey, there's the light. Okay. I'll go first. Ready? Ready as I'll ever be, I guess. Well, sitting ball. You mean Geronimo. To each his own, Jack. Luca dives out head first. Two seconds later, I follow. It's like plunging into a bottomless black pool. The air rushes by me a mile a minute. I jerk at my ripcord. The chute billows out behind me and snap open. Almost jerks me apart. I start floating now, swinging back and forth. I spot a clearing below and try to work my way toward it. Then... Too late, I see a tree coming up at me fast. I land right in the middle of it with the shrouds of my chute snarled around me. Great, a fine time to be trussed up like a moth in a cocoon. Suddenly I hear voices, they're coming from the clearing. I manage to fish my knife out, cut myself loose and drop to the ground. I work my way quietly to the edge of the clearing and look out. Two gorillas are holding machine guns on Luca. I get out my gun, but I don't want to shoot. The noise might bring the others. Okay, boys. Drop the guns and keep it quiet. One of the gorillas swings his machine gun around. I hit the ground. Luca does too, but the other gorilla isn't so lucky. First catches him in the middle and he folds. Luca grabs his gun on the way down and clubs the gun out of the hands of the first boy and starts running for a jeep 20 feet away. Are you not a mic, a chump? No, Luca, no. Oh, brother. What's the difference, Steve? We already made enough noise to wake up Riva Winkle. Yeah, I guess so. Come on, let's go up a jeep. Yeah. Hey, you know the roads around here, Luca? What roads are? Well, we better get on one in a hurry. That gunfire will probably bring some more gorillas. Oh, we go as far as we can in a jeep, then we'll ditch them. This, this, this is a road? Well, this neck of the woods, it's practically a highway. Hold on, we'll go back sharp, turn left. Hey, wait a minute. What's that ahead of us? 
It's a rope rock. Well, got any bright ideas, Steve? Just one. Not too bright, but it'll have to do. Slow down like you were going to stop at the roadblock. Then, when I give you the word, speed up again. We'll try to bust through. Okay. Brother, half a dozen of them. Okay, step on the gas. Hold on. <laughs> we made it, Steve. So far, they're all on foot, too. That's good. Get down as low as you can, Luca. I can't get any lower than I am right now. <laughs> Look, ma, no hand. Hey. <laughs> Didn't know I could drive with my feet, did you? Oh, boy, they hit a tire. Watch it, Steve. We're going into brush. Okay. You okay? Yeah. Let's get out of here. Okay. We've got about four of my head start on them. We can lose them easy. I don't care how we do it. Just start losing them, Buster. Yeah. That's a farmhouse just ahead. Who's there? Milani. Who's Milani? My girl. You're it? Hey, now, wait a minute. Don't tell me we're breaking our necks to get there just so you can pay a social call. Uh, not exactly. Malani and her grandfather, Taka, run underground escape route for prisoners of gorillas. Come on. Uh, this ought to be a safe place, then. For us, safest place in northern Indochina. That's good. We've already had enough close shaves to suit me. I guess you don't get to see Milani very often, then, huh? Uh, not as often as I would like, believe me. I guess after this trouble's over, we settle down and get married. Well, here we are. Our troubles are over for time being. Milani, take care of us. That's a signal. Coming. What have you? A gorilla. Yeah, with a gun. I said coming. So, this is the safest place around. Uh... But, Steve, Milani. Hello, Luca. Milani, what does this mean? It means you have finally been trapped, Luca. Trapped? Then all the time you've been working with them. But of course. Where's your grandfather? Here, Luca. Is this true what she says, Tucker? As you see. Well, you said Milani would take care of us, Luca. She sure did. Oh, sorry, Steve. Just call me prize sucker of all time. It's over against the wall, both of you. Hey, you see, darling. I told you Luca would fall into our trap if you just waited patiently. Yes. I did not believe you at first, but I do now. So, what happens now, Buster? I suppose you got ideas about making it pretty warm for us. No, I make it cool for you both. Cool? Fifty bullets in my machine gun. That lets in a lot of air. Twenty-five holes in each of you. Herbert Marshall stars as Ken Thurston, the man called X, in a short while over most of these NBC stations. Battling intrigue and espionage in far-off corners of the world, the man called X lives by his wits and his business is danger. Tomorrow night, NBC brings you another broadcast of radio's greatest spectacle, The Big Show. Tallulah is your hostess once again, and tomorrow's stars include Fred Allen, Ed Wynn, Jack Carson, Ed Gardner, Mindy Carson, Meredith Wilson, and many, many more. It's an hour and a half every Sunday of the best in comedy, music, and drama. It's The Big Show. Now, back to Dangerous Assignment and Steve Mitchell. Well, at this point, I'm looking like a bad risk for a long-term loan... My chances of getting Sarvish out of that prison camp alive are nil. Matter of fact, it looks like my chances of staying alive are equally nil. The gorilla is giving us a big, nasty grin over the barrel of his machine gun, and Milani, Luca's ex-girlfriend, is hanging all over him. Darling, kiss me. You could have spared me this, Milani. Shut up, Luca. Kiss me, darling. Oh, there. That is it. Yes! <laughs> hey. She knifed him. Quick, get it come. Oh, God. Well, looks like we had you pegged all wrong, Milani. I, I should not have doubted you. Oh, it was the only thing I could do. 
What was Sakurora doing here? We do not know. Apparently, his suspicions were aroused. We have escaped prisoner hiding in next room. Malani and I both knew if Gorilla searched house, he would find prisoner and kill us. So Malani pretended to be on his side to keep him from searching. Look, you say you've got an escaped prisoner here? Yes, a man named Kali. Where did he come from? He told us he escaped from the large prison camp near here. Hmm, that could be the camp where they've got Sarvich. I'd like to talk to this Kali. Very well. Kali. Yes. Come in. What do you want, Malani? This man is one of us, Kali. Oh. He wants to talk to you. I want you to take a look at this picture, Kali. Is this man in the prison camp you just escaped from? Mm, yes. I saw him there. Good. Now all we've got to figure out is how to get over a few assorted barbed wire fences past the It will the guard. not be necessary to enter prison camp. Huh? Why not? All the prisoners are working on River Bridge two miles from camp. Even at night? Yes. But two hours' journey from here. I will take you to it. But, Kali, you have just escaped from that place. You would risk recapture by going back? I know what life in prison camp is like, Malani. If I am able to help someone else escape... The risk is worth it. Well, I'm glad you feel that way. I'm ready to leave right now. Yes. The sooner we get started, the better. I will stay behind and get rid of Karela's body. All right, grandfather. We should be back before dawn. Yeah. With luck. And without luck, we'll be working on a bridge, too. Come on. Let's go. See? There is a bridge ahead of us. They have floodlights all around. We better stop here. Okay. Brother, this is, isn't going to be any sense with the joint all lit up and swarming with guards. Steve, maybe we... Wait a minute. Look, that prisoner over there with a the pick. That's Sarvich. What do we do now? Drop our hunkies to attract his attention? I will get him. How, Collie? As you see, I am dressed like other prisoners. I can work my way to him without attracting attention. I will tell him you're waiting for him here, in the underbrush. You will be taking a big chance, Kali. I know, but it is the best way. Yeah, I guess you're right. But take it easy, now. That Kali, he's real eager, isn't he? He sure is. Look, Steve, if there should be a ruckus and we get separated, there's a big fallen tree about a quarter mile from a farmhouse. Yeah, I remember it. We meet there, huh? Okay. Hey! hey. Oh, no, no, no. Look at Kali out there. He's not heading for Salvage. He's heading for one of the guards. And he's pointing in this direction. We've got us! Ah, Luca, put down that machine gun. <laughs> you and your itchy, tricky finger. Look, a prisoner's all scattered. Come, we must get out of here. Salvage! Steve, get down! Salvage! Care of that guard, Luca. You'll set it! Over here in the brush, quick! Hurry it up! Get out, Savage! Who are you? Steve Mitchell from the States. I was sent to bail you out. Suits me fine. Let's go. I... Much farther to the farmhouse, Luca. Just a couple hundred yards. Brother, you'd never know it in this jungle. Look, how about a breather? That prison camp diet isn't conducive to, to endurance. Okay, Sarvich. Well, Arnie, as soon as we get to the farmhouse, you and your grandfather must pack up and leave. Yes. Kali was obviously sent there to get information on us. The guerrillas may know more about us than we think. I, I'm pretty sure they do. What do you mean, Sarvich? Uh, this morning, I... I overheard a couple of guards talking in the prison camp. They said something about a farmhouse they were keeping an eye on. Come. I would like to get back there as soon as possible and get grandfather. Hey, you make it? Okay, Sarbit? Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd crawl if I had to. Hi. What's the matter, Luca? Look. Look up in the sky ahead. Huh? It's all red all of a sudden. A oh, fire. The farmhouse. Come. Hey, hey, not so fast. But I must find out. Hold it, Milani. We don't want to go busting out into that clearing. Steve is right, Valani. We just ease up to an edge. Oh, look. It is the farmhouse. You can see it burning. Oh, look. Oh, take it easy, Valani. We don't know yet whether... We better hold it right here. Look, half a dozen gorillas with torches in their hands. Wait, wait. By the light of the flames over there, a body. It's... Grandfather. Malani. 
Brother. I don't look, Milani. Turn your head away. I want you to... No. I want to look. I want to remember the faces of those guerrillas. I will see them again. Steve, this isn't good. If they're in on this deal so much as... Yeah, that means they'll be scarring this jungle for us. It also means we'd better get started for the coast right away. Sarvich, I guess it's up to you. Uh, uh, what do you mean? It's about 30 miles to the coast. 30 miles through some pretty rough jungle. We'll be traveling in daylight, and there'll probably be about three gorillas per square foot all the way. We've got to get there by tomorrow midnight, and it's almost dawn now. Uh, sounds jolly. Yeah, and that prison camp hasn't left you in very good condition. You think you can make it? I don't know, Steve, but I, I told you once I'd crawl if I had to, and I may end up doing just that. But as long as there's a crawl left in there... That's it... good enough. Steve, behind you, gorilla! Get him! Oh! Where'd you get your sergeant? The lake. The gorillas at the farmhouse. They heard the shot. They're coming. Crank up that machine gun, Luca. It's all cranked, Jack. One! Two! Away. Good. That'll give us a few minutes anyway. Come on, let's get started. But my, my leg, I, I can't walk on it. Okay, so we play piggyback. No, Steve, no. You can't carry me all that way. Mm. You'll all be caught and killed. Look, this is no time to hold a debate, Sarvich. I was sent over here to fish you out. You've got information we need back in the States, and you're going back there. Steve and I take turns carrying you, Sarvich. We can make it. It's sure worth a try anyway. Now, come on, let's go. <laughs> If you don't think you can have nightmares in broad daylight, you should try inching your way through a steaming jungle with a wounded man on your back, a blazing sun beating down on you, and several assorted gorillas scouring the brush for you. Twice we hug the ground while their patrols come so close I can count the slugs in their guns, but we keep going. Luca and I trade off carrying Sarvich. Milani just keeps plodding along, saying nothing. The hours drag by, but they're not dragging any more than I am at this point. Finally, it gets dark again, and we try to speed up. It's a race against time now. We've got to get to the coast by midnight. Nine o'clock comes. Ten o'clock. By this time, we're on the ragged edge. Eleven o'clock. We keep stumbling along, and then after what seems like three years, we come out on a little bluff overlooking the ocean. Steve, this is it. We made it. Okay, sorry. Down you go easy now. Oh, I, I could not have gone another step. Oh, Steve. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Okay. I, I didn't think we were going to make it. You know something, Sarvich? Neither did I. What time is it, Luca? So, uh, two minutes before midnight. Brother, that's really cutting the margin close. A torpedo boat should be along any minute. We have to wait out to it. Yeah, that'll be a pleasure, believe me. I uh, Wait. What's the matter? Down there on the beach below us, I saw a glint of metal. You sure, Steve? Yes. Look. Some figures. It's a guerrilla patrol. I must have found out about boat somehow. Oh, this is just great. We break our backs getting here and then find them between us and safety. Listen. Yeah? I, I hear the boat. Yeah, yeah. I can see it in the moonlight. It's coming in close. The guerrillas see it, too. They're waiting for it. Steve, how are we going to get to the boat? You answer that one. You'll hit the jackpot, Luca. Oh, wait. Where's the flashlight? Here it is. What are you going to do, Steve? Send a message to that boat. We've got to head it off. Maybe we can arrange a pickup at some other point. But, Steve, some of these gorillas understand English. They could probably read a message. And as for arranging another rendezvous, you know we could never make it to anywhere else. Yeah, I guess you're right, brother. If I don't call the right play now, we're all cooked. Uh, I... Hey, wait a minute. What is it? Luca, the first time we met, you asked me what happened to Notre Dame this season. Well, sure, sure, but what's that got to do? It means that some of the boys in this neck of the woods are football fans. Well, yeah, some of them. Including the French? Well, sure, particularly about Notre Dame, but... Okay, that's all I wanted to know. I just hope that French torpedo boat skipper is a fan, too. What are you sending? N -O -T -Not Notre Dame? Look, I still don't see what you're trying. Good. Use... More reverses. Notre Dame should use more reverses. What kind of message is that? Hey, hey the boat's turning. It is heading up the coast. Or maybe it is leaving. Ah, oh, Steve, I get it now. You want a skipper to try a reverse of his own. But you think he'll understand? I don't know. That's what we've got to wait to find out. The boat keeps going slowly up the coast, and the gorillas on the beach start following it in the same direction. 
I still don't know whether the skipper understood my message, but it's our only chance. Then, when the boat gets about a mile up the coast, it suddenly turns around and heads back under full throttle. Steve, it worked. He drew the gorillas away from here. Yeah, let's get down to the beach quick. Get aboard, Sarvich. Come on. Okay, Steve. Come on, Milani. I am not going. Why? I will stay behind. There is much work for me here. Are you crazy? Your grandfather's been killed, and you stand a good chance of the same thing. Now, come on. No, no, no. It's no use, Steve. She and I have already talked about it. I want her to come, too. So much. But she said that she's staying. Go quickly, all of you. While there's still time, I will be all right. And Luca, it will work out for you and me. After this is over... It will work out for you and me. Yeah. Sure. Come on, Steve. So we head for the beach, leaving Milani standing there on the bluff. The boat is coming in at us now. It stops about shoulder deep and we wade out to it. The skipper is wearing a natty little mustache and a big grin. Come aboard, gentlemen. Come aboard. A pleasure. You on okay, Sarvich? Uh, yeah. yeah. Up you go, Luca. Okay. Mark in your hand, Steve. Thanks. So, oh, the reverse, it worked perfectly, no? Skipper, the reverse, it worked perfectly, yes. Now, I suggest a wide end run and pour the cold over. We. Oui. Well, it's hard to believe. I guess we're finally in the clear. Hey, look. Back on the bluff, somebody's signaling with a flashlight. It must be Milani. G-O-O-D. Good. L-U-C. Hey, she quit signaling. Steve. Oh, well, maybe she had to duck in a hurry, Luca. Yeah. Maybe they got her. Yeah, maybe they got her, Luca. You know... I learned a lot of wisecracks in the States, but I can't seem to think of any of them right now. There aren't any. What's going to work out for her and me? That's what she said, wasn't it, Steve? Yeah, that's what she said, Luca. So now I'll maybe get a few extra ones for her. But it'll go on and on. Yeah, it'll go on and on. I guess we all know that, but there's something else we can know, too. What's that? As long as there are people like Milani, we've got a pretty good idea which side's going to come out on top. Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell, is written by Bob Reif and Adrian Jandol, with music by Robert Armbruster, and is produced and directed by Bill Karn. Join us again next week at this time when Brian Donlevy, starring in the role of Steve Mitchell, will embark on another dangerous assignment. chimes mean good times on NBC. Tonight, Herbert Marshall stars as the man called X, a man without a name who travels the world over, battling the forces of international intrigue and espionage. For mystery every Saturday night, it's the man called X. For music on Saturday night, it's your hit parade, bringing you the top tunes in the land, selected by you and presented by Raymond Scott's orchestra, Eileen Wilson and Snooky Lanson. Now hear the man called X and the big show tomorrow on NBC. NBC.